we have a young man who's going to come on every Friday this month. We're so pleased to have him. He takes time out of a busy schedule to come on here and just give you and come from the heart. And you know one thing I like about Mr. Nelson, he, he, he's he's not only just a, a great guy, but a great coach, a great mentor when it comes to health, spiritual, financial matters, but also building a business. And let you guys see there's more side, there's different sides to us. It's not just one. It's not about just money. It's not about just, it's about building the person as a whole. And that's what I love about his clarity and his transparency. You know, the best, and you heard me say this, if you've heard me say, if you're a new person, you may not have heard this, but I'm going to tell you this, because I have been to the, all the internationals because I've been involved. I've never seen a, a promotion like his promotion. Mr. Nelson, by hands down, just took it all. I mean, anytime you get the co-founder sitting in the engineer's seat with the mouth open, like, wow. Uh, I, I, I mean, I was blown away. Right, Miss Celia? Yeah. Look, he had Marvin Sapp singing, who brought the house down. He had Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Brown next, right, right there next to him. Les Brown on stage with you. I mean, how do you got two between? I mean, that shows you the crowd he runs in. And he wants to pour into you the knowledge he's gained through his years of experience. There's two ways you learn. I was telling somebody this yesterday. First, I was prospecting. One is you learn through other people's experiences or through trial and error of your own. Now, I don't know about you. I don't want to be hard at it. I really learn through other people's trials and experience. So I can short convince, that's right, so short convince that learning curve, rather than learn it myself and hit my head against the wall. I rather learn from somebody who's already done it like a guy. You just don't, when I go to Africa, I just don't go in the, in the jungle, I get a guy because I want to come back alive, <laughs> right? Miss Williams, she's, oh, she's all, look, she's at work. Oh my God, bless your heart. So without further ado, all the way from Southern California, uh, mentor to mentors, he was here before I got in AC and he's one to follow. Without further ado, the great, the one and only Yoda himself, Mr. Byron Nelson. Let's give him a hand as he comes on. How you doing? Uh, let me get over to that screen. I am doing fine as frog hair split five ways in sandpaper. I, oh, my <laughs> God. I like those glasses. Wait, 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 sensation. You look at his glasses. Oh, my Lord, I love it. <laughs> How you doing, sir? I am so excited. I actually what? was up early. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to end up doing, I'm going to see if I could do an abbreviated version uh, and be done in about 30 minutes or, or somewhere within that time of 30 to 40. I have a, uh, uh, it's amazing just how life and COVID has happened. So, so my mom her washer went out and so i went and bought two washers and dryers twice and it didn't fit because of the dimensions of the custom cell of the house Whew. so i then called whirlpool to have them send the parts and send out a, a person to fix everything and it was postponed and delayed i guess everything is in back order between furniture equipment and everything this has been going on for four months so i finally found this guy uh through through our network who said, whatever it is, I'll get it fixed. So I'm, you know, and he, he the only time I had was 9.30 this morning. So whenever he comes, my mom would give me a heads up so I could go in there and take care of that. But for those of you that are just joining or, or this might be your first or hopefully not your last time, <laughs> then in turn, you should know that the myth, the God, the legend himself, Mr. Al Thomas, if you're, if you're blessed enough to work with him, um, we don't see these accolades and edify each other um, just to, to blow each other up or blow smoke, if, as some people would say. We have such a genuine respect and love for one, just, just the person and, you know, each, each other. I have so much love and respect. He's, he's become a best friend to me, a, a mentor to me, a, a family to me. And um, I just posted something this morning that after 18, you choose your family. <laughs> so, you know, for those that want to blame your family and and, and be able to say what does work, it doesn't work because of your family, then go pick some new family. <laughs> I'm hoping I can toggle on my phone. And I really put uh, a good hour plus into preparing this of really what I wanted to share, because a book that I'm reading is called Miracles. And, you know, it really deals with whatever you're going through. Um, what I'm very clear about is um, instead of beating people up, a lot of times we beat you up, uh, especially since it's a leadership. And in most cases, you need to be beat up. But there's also time for support and to understand and take empathy in what people are going through. Um, but in that, you got to also understand that, you know, people either claim experience or they claim excuses. That's what I would write down.
But what I did is I actually went through um, for about an hour and a half. Actually, I was just brainstorming on if I got started in this business, one of the, you know, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. We're very clear about that. Everybody wants an NFL championship, but very few people want to run the stairs. But at least they have an idea of what they have to go through in order to get that championship. And see, right now, what you, each, each one of us, not just you, we are all f- confronted with, no matter what level of life, because they're all, it's all perspective, right? It's all relative, um, is the price. I consistently state that before you embark upon a journey, you need to identify the price you're willing to pay for what you want. You buy a car, you know the price. You know, you, you want a home, you know the price. Um, I believe the reason why most people get foreclosed on in this business as an asset, because that's what it is. Our business is an asset. It's a store of value asset. It's massive. It will make you flat out wealthy and it will grow in value over time. The beauty- All right. While we're waiting to get him back, let me just share something I saw this morning on YouTube. I study Warren Buffett. I study successful people. I study other billionaires. And one of the things I saw, I ran it on YouTube today, Mr. Bree Clemens, was Warren Buffett. It was like a little pyramid thing. And he was talking about things to stay away from, business to be in. And guess what the height of the, thing, the, 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 the chart was? Have a, have a business that gives you leverage and residual income. And I went, oh, my God, that's us. In yep. times of, go ahead, you're back? Yes, uh-huh. I was just okay, listening. You're 100%. I mean, and you're hitting the nail on the, on the, on the right. I mean, that, we, have that. we have an asset, a store of value. We have residual income. We have what will give us our time back. But you have to be very clear. So what I, where I was going with the price is understanding, I believe more people can and will win if they establish the price. When you go into a bidding war, if you know when to walk away, you should need to, you need to know how much you're not willing to pay or how far you're willing to not go, if that makes any sense. If you can establish those parameters of your high and low, you can win nine times out of 10 at this game. There's always going to be, and you can write down an X factor, which is the unexpected. But that's the beautiful thing about life is the unexpected. If you knew everything that was going to happen, it wouldn't be a life worth living. Right. I mean, that, there's no fun in that. It's actually the entire value store value that we're talking about lives in the journey. It completely lives in the journey in the adventure and in, in the learning curves and the wisdom that you acquire and the experiences you acquire and the down. In fact, you will treasure. And I, I know I'm screaming at the choir for, for a lot of you, but I, I want sometimes we have to be reminded of it. You will actually treasure more of your downtime, more of your hard times, more of your bad experiences than your wins, because it will make you so resilient. It will make you so unstoppable. It's what takes a coal and turns it into a diamond is the hardest parts of your life in times. But again, it's not how you, re- it's not how you react, it's how you respond. So how you respond consistently deals with your attitude. That's a class in itself as to before you even start in this. So I'm hoping, and Mr. Thomas, you can tell me if you can still hear me. I want to pull this up on my phone because I know my picture will go off. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. We can still hear you. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So what I did is I came up with, if I were starting in this game, 15 questions you need to ask yourself. I mean, really, and, and, and even for those that have been around for six days, six months, six years, it's, it's really time for a reset. And so I want, to, I want to give you these. Number one, the most important, which is rhetorical for most, but why am I doing this? Why are you doing this? What is your why? We could talk about that until the, sun, until the cows come home. Because your why will keep you in the game when in your darkest hour. You know, if, you're, if, you, if you go back to my movie, John Q., if your son needs a heart transplant, your why has to be bigger than you. It has to be larger than life. It has to, it cannot be about money. It cannot be about, you know, putting your foot in or it's something new. Let's just try this. It has to be 
so purposeful that it keeps you on the grind even when you get knocked down several times. So the first question is asking yourself, why am I doing this? You really need to revisit that. In fact, uh, uh, Mr. Greg Provenzano says it so perfectly. The people that quit are the ones that lose focus of their why. They forgot where their why was or it was never established. The ones that win, they understand their why. They, there's a certain DNA. You know, and this is a, this is an inventory checklist for yourself to ask yourself, am I prepared to win? Not can you win? Everyone can win. Everyone can go and get a Nobel Prize. Everybody can change their family tree. But am I prepared to do it? Me being you, you being me. Number two, am I willing to commit? I mean, sold out 10 to 15 hours a week consistently. 400, I mean, literally that's the, that's that's the minimum price you're going to have to put in and you're going to have to track that a minimum of 10 15 will get you where you need to be and of course of course overachievers they become obsessed with what they're doing they stop counting the hours because they're way beyond that but to truly succeed in this business it was created for a part-time person with a full-time income but meant to be built with a full-time mentality on a part-time basis because it's linked to your why. Nothing moves without that why being in front of you. So the second question is, am I really willing to commit a minimum of 10 to 15 hours consistently every week for a year and track it? There's so many tools to be able to do that. Number three, Am I willing to be consistent with the time that I put in? Am I willing to be consistent? It's not what you do once in a while. There's a lot of people that start a diet and then they're good for like a month, two months, three months. A lot of people stop smoking for six, seven, eight months. A lot of people stop drinking. Why more people fall off is because they were never committed, which was number two, and consistent over a long period of time to create the unconscious consciousness where they just know it's like brushing your teeth or taking a shower. I mean, it's like making your bed. There's just certain things. I, I do my business in my sleep unconsciously. I meet a person. I unconsciously, Al Thomas just meets a person. Angel meets a person. Julian meets a person. I mean, it just keeps going on. Jocelyn meets a person. It's unconscious to want to bless somebody else, not to sell somebody else, but to want to bless somebody else. Am I willing to be consistent with my effort, if I'm just getting started, I would count it down 120 days, 119 days, 118 days with a system that works for me. If you work with any of the leaders, you don't even have to work with your upline. You can find so many leaders, just like Mr. Al Thomas and so myself and so many others that are willing to pour into you. That's the ACN family. That's the beautiful thing about this is being able to truly develop support and help. 120 days will create an unconscious competence for what you're doing as if your life depended on it or as if somebody else's life depended on it. And if you aren't, if it's not at that level, I can almost assure you there's a no win in there. There's a no win in there. The next one what we're looking at, and I'm going to stop counting. I'm just going to go through them. Am I, there's 15. Am I willing to lose friends? Now, I also want to premise this with the disclaimer. You don't have to lose friends based on the technique and how you share it. In fact, if you learn the proper way to do it, but most people don't listen. They don't come in committed. They don't come in consistent. They don't write out their why. They don't understand the depth of learning a new craft, a new trade. You don't accidentally make an extra five, six, or seven figures anywhere there must be a learned skill set that comes behind it. If you take the time to take a step back with the first questions that were asked and you were willing to learn, lose friends over your purpose, your drive, your family, meaning if I decide, me being you, to become a doctor, I'm not looking for approval. If I decide to become an attorney, if I decide to go to the NFL, if I decide to become a dentist, if I decide to be a CPA, if I decide that I want to open up a boxing company, a shipping company, a, a, a concierge company. 
I'm not looking for validation. And you need to understand that up front that not everybody's going to understand nor support you in your desire to be who you choose powerfully to be. The only way a person could be swayed is if they didn't make a decision and they wanted validation. They were hoping something would be easy. They were hoping that everybody in their, in their circle would support them. Well, if that were the case, you should never decide to run a business because anyone who runs a business that is successful, 99% of the business does not come from the people that they know. The people that they know were just served up papers to support them in any and all ways possible. They don't need to understand our mission. And we, I, do not need their approval. I need to know this going into this game if I'm going to be a CEO. Because I believe that so many lay people have come into this business not understanding what it takes to run a business. They came in with an employee mentality, wanting to be an employer, but still having an employee mentality. So they're still looking to be liked by all of the people that are working around them in the cubicle next to them in their circle. And when, like they need to, you're the boss. The boss is the most disliked person in the company, generally speaking, except for the people that have integrity and character that he serves at the highest level and takes care of them properly. Am I going to commit to studying? Am I going to commit to studying? Me being you. Am I going to commit to studying in and around my craft? If I'm if I'm going to play in the NBA championship, if I'm going to get the highest bid, if I want the highest tier, if I want the $20, $30 million a year contract, the $120 plus million, the $240 million contract, there's levels to this game. There's some that make $100 a year and some that make $100 a minute. You know why? They both are playing the same game, just like in the NBA, just like in the NFL. One person committed to a whole nother level of playing at a specific level a specific stratosphere of learning the skill, learning the craft, while another person had their foot in or took a season off or felt like, you know what, I've been working so hard, I just need to reevaluate and reset my life. I need to go and reset the agenda. I, I, need, to, I, I need to start over. No, you start over in your mind, but you acquire all the wisdom and experience along the journey, which is amazing. Am I willing to accept rejection? I mean, first of all, that should be a no-brainer. But the reality of it is, if you're a man, you're going to get rejected. If you're a woman, you're going to get rejected. It just comes with par for the life. I mean, it's just, if you ever apply to a college, you're going to get rejected at some point. But the, the greater you can actually embrace that as par for the course, meaning that's just what we do. I'm a CEO. I'm pitching my idea. How many stories do you need to hear about Colonel Sanders or anybody else that was rejected or Michael Jordan who got kicked off the team in ninth grade? I mean, it just keeps going. It's like they had already made a solid. They had crossed the, They put a line in the sand and they, their mind was made up. That's the most dangerous person on the planet is a person who has a made up mind. It doesn't matter if it's Renata. It doesn't matter if it's Jocelyn. It doesn't matter who's on my squad. When the mind is made up, they become lethal. That, I'm telling you, the universe leaves them alone. But you got to prove to the universe that you aren't weak and that you're sold out and this is what I'm doing. And then nobody's going to question what you're going to do. They're just going to keep asking you, so how's that doing? How are you doing? Nobody in my world questions who I am and what I do. And nor do they do with Mr. Al Thomas or any of my other associates that I affiliate with. Period. Am I, ex am I willing... And I, I get a high off of, off of rejection. I go into the paint. I'm looking for it. In fact, I don't even want to stop. I don't even, when I'm working my business in the trenches, as we are preparing to do at the highest level, I don't even want my day to stop unless I get 10 rejections. I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even excited about the yeses. It builds a specific muscle. You know, if you get in a ring, you're going to get hit in the kidney. You know if you get in the ring, you're going to get hit in the head. You know if you play football, somebody's going to hit you really hard. That's why you get the padding, the preparation, and the plan, and make sure that your body is tight, your mind is right in this game to be able to play the game at the highest frequency. Am I going to commit to studying? There are three components, I believe, just as a scale or as a skeleton, to master. Training, which is 
just like the national training coming up on the 25th and 26th. That, 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 that's, that's a no-brainer. The weekly training, whether you plug into two or three or four times a week, what are you doing consistently without fail? Which training, which trainer are you listening to? We don't care about who your upline is. Who's the person, when you're playing ball or tennis, I'm choosing Agassi or I'm choosing Bajoran Borg. I'm choosing the person that best resonates with me that I can get excited about, that I can go and emulate, duplicate, and be better than, be a 2.0 version of that person. Though I will still pay homage to my lineage and my upline who has a vested interest in me. Am I willing to accept rejection? Am I willing to invest in my business? That's the next one. How much are you investing? And what's your business? Your business is yourself. It's you. I want to make sure you guys can still hear me. Can you still hear me, Mr. Thomas? Nod your head. I'm, I'm on here. Yes, excellent. That's all I need to know. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Excellent. So beautiful. Am I investing in my business? I need to know that I'm investing in my business. I am my business. My business, all the skill sets, everything I can find and get my hands on in network marketing and becoming a leader. Everything I can get my hands on in network marketing and becoming a leader. We could talk about that for another two days. Am I going to try this? This is a question I'm having with myself, being you, you being me. Am I going to try this or am I doing this? Am I going to try this or am I going to do this? There's a major distinction between trying and doing. And there has to be a decision between those two topics before we even get started. Am I willing to learn how to do this without support? It's a critical question. The blessing is you have more support than you need. In fact, you have so much support, it actually hinders you. But the question you got to ask yourself is if nobody supported me, nobody held my hand, nobody picked me up, Am I still going to do this? Because when you decide to do something at a high professional level, there's not a whole lot of people you can turn to except for you, yourself, and God. Until you generate enough respect of peers that are equally yoked or higher than. It's real simple. Am I willing to do this without support? In fact, here's a little secret. The majority of the people that hit SVP didn't have any support. The majority of the people that hit RVP didn't have a whole lot of support. They may have had some guidance and a little hands-on here and there, but there was always a rift. There was always a, a, something that was in between them and their upline. In fact, they got so pissed off with not getting what they needed that they became an out Thomas, and that's why we create so much enabling and so much dependency is because we want to give back thinking it would help to the people that got what we didn't get going through this journey. It's quite amazing. The next question, me being you, you being me, I, am I going to set goals? Powerful goals. And those goals have to be around three things, financial, position, production. If you will put it in order, it's actually financial, production, position. Unfortunately, too many people, because of the way we blow up ETL, set that as their first goal. And that's what they focus in on. And that's where a lot of them get, you know, just like going from freshman class, it's a whole lot of people, sophomore, there's less, junior, there's less, senior year, there's even less. And those that graduate, even less. Because they don't have this in order. If I have financial goals, then in turn, I know I need to then understand the production of what I need to put into it to get those financial goals. And if I follow the structure, then by default, I will, I will hit every position along the way, by default. Am I willing to be uncomfortable? Am I willing to be uncomfortable? Very powerful question. I just want you guys to simmer on that for a second. Are you? Because it seems as though whether you're ready to or not, you're going to be. The distinction of those that win champion mentalities is they choose their discomfort versus let it be, letting it be imposed upon them. 
are you willing to be uncomfortable? Next question, am I willing to be a leader? It's a very powerful question because with that comes so many things. A public figure, a public voice, a support factor, a person that's there when nobody else will be there, a person that wakes up when nobody else wakes up, a person will stay up later than nobody else, a person will go without sleep, without sleep, even though that's all that they love and live for is sleep. People that will give up weekends, give a short period of time and sacrifice from their family, they're going to have to give up something. The leader's not questioning how much. It's just like, what do I need to do? And that's what you got to understand. There's two different people. One person asks how much. The other person says, what? Just tell me what I need to do. How much? What do I need to do? Leader is just, what do I need to do? The follower is, how much does it cost? That's an employee mentality because the employer mentality is asking how much is it worth? How much time do I have to put in? That's a follower. That's an employee mentality. That's a, that's a second rate, mediocre individual because if though you want the body you want, you, it, it, however long it takes. If you want the health that you want, if you want to be a great father, if you want to be a great mother, if you want a great income, nobody's asking how long. They just tell me, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? What's the next thing I need to do? What am I not doing? What am I doing? That's a leader's conversation. What am I not doing? They don't wait two and three months without going and getting a check. They don't wait two and three weeks. Without, I'm not going two or three weeks without getting a check. Now, I have gone two or three weeks, not in this business, but in other ventures. I, and I'm frustrated as hell. I'm like, hold it. I need to, everything got to stop. I need to figure this out. Checks are being written. I'm not getting one. What's the problem? I need to understand that. I'm not going into this, woe is me, let me find myself. Oh my God, maybe I'm just not good. Maybe I need to take a class. Maybe I need to find myself. No, there's an action that is not being done as to why I am not getting a check. Once I identify what the action is, I need to do it as badly as I can to get good, as good as I can to become great, as great as I can to become extraordinary to where the world bows down and stands in line for me to teach others how to do it. That's a leader. That's the champion's mentality. Another question you need to ask as we get to the 14. What are my personal weaknesses? Now, you may say, I already know my personal weaknesses. If you know your personal weaknesses, that's a bigger problem that you haven't done anything about it. But if you're an evolving individual, an evolving leader, there's weaknesses in which you either need to, one, improve upon, or two, delegate for someone to do what you are not willing to improve upon. But that's a void that is blocking you. If it's talking to people, employ somebody who talks to a lot of people. If it's customer acquisition, employ somebody who's good at customer acquisition to help you. If it's prospecting, employ the efforts of someone to be able to help you with that. But I'm not going a month plugging into calls, trainings, and not showing, and showing up in a space that you're supposed to generate a check. And again, I'm not faulting anyone who has because I've been there before. You may say, well, it's easier for you to say, Mr. Nelson, you're SVP, you, you're there, you, you, you know, you write, but there was, there's prices. There's, 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 there's many places of frustration. Someone says it's hard, hard. We, we don't even want to talk about what's hard. This is so easy in comparison to anything else I've ever seen to make money on the planet is to love on people, bless people and help people. Love on people, bless people, and help people is what we get paid for. And the person who does that better than anybody else, their check gets bigger than anybody else's. And the last question, do I have long-term vision and patience? Do I have long-term vision or do I have microwave? Am I doing something I need to turn around in two days, in a week, in two weeks? Do I feel like a failure that I've been doing something? I'm on this call, so I can't be a failure. I'm still showing up to win. Maybe I should take some copious notes. Maybe I should write this down. Maybe I should have a conversation with myself. Maybe I should create a new circle. Maybe I should get two or three other people that are doing well, much better than me. I mean, you got so many people. I mean, Mr. Al Thomas highlights everyone that is successful in this circle on this call every week. Heck, three, four times, you know, a week. Have you ever gotten any of their numbers? I mean, I can go through here. I mean, just, I mean. We know Belinda's had success. We know Sharon's had success. Pat has had success. 
um, well, they aren't in my group. That's your problem. Because one phone call would be a group. What the hell are you talking about? Sam has had a whole lot of success. I, what do you do? Plug in once every month, every two months, every three months, every six months, you're gone and you're still in? Who are you lying to? I, I mean, really. Me and Edmund had this conversation yesterday. I love real conversations. Me and Tammy have had this conversation. Let's have a real conversation. Stop BSing yourself. Stop BSing everybody else around you and acting like you're in something. Just tell them, you know what? I paid registration for being a part of ACN and I chose powerfully to just help some people get some customers. I may even have 50 points, 60 points, 100 points, but I didn't choose to be a leader. I just wanted to get good at getting customers. And if that's your choice and that's your decision, then just go get customers. And you never have to even get on calls to build a residual income and just, unless you just like the camaraderie. But get out of the way of the people who are committed. Me and Heather had this conversation. It's like, you know what? Why don't you just take a year and let's, let's do this? And we did that. And now she's having success. But she was committed. She was sold out. She had made a decision. She wasn't going to quit. See, other people, when they take time off, they want to reevaluate their life to be able to say, well, maybe it's just not for me. What, success or, right, or, or cashing a big check? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know? So this is leadership. This is, this is where, you know, the rubber meets the road. This is not where you massage somebody, butter them up. I'm not here to ignite you and excite you. I'm here to give you coffee, just straight smelling salt for people who are serious about it. Because at the end of the day, you know, and those that, that heard my feed this past week, and you guys heard me talking about last week, you know, one decision, this guy who's just, I mean, he's amazing to me. He's one of my closest friends. Um, and he's in a circle where the three of us have had massive success. He's had substantial success. And because of life, he drinks. I know a couple of people like that. And it, it's just so irresponsible to know that you could actually, what are your vices? See, and that, that's part of the conversation of the questions you need to ask yourself. Is your vice alcohol? Because he's now at 55 with three counts of manslaughter and will never see the light of day and never had a criminal record and has two degrees, amazing family. Daughter just graduated from LSU last week. And now he's on lockdown for the rest of his life. Is it alcohol? Is it drugs? Is it wasting time? Is it sex? What is your vice? because it's gonna cost you. At some point, it's going to be expensive if you don't get a can of act right and understand you're in complete control and responsible for the decisions in your life. There's nobody else at fault, nobody else to blame. And especially when you have a community in a village like this that genuinely wants to see you win, honestly wants to see you win. Beyond any shadow of a doubt, you have to get your priorities straight and your agenda straight moving forward. That's 15 questions that I would have a serious conversation with myself without just looking for excitement, ignitement, or for motivation, or to get hyped, or just plugging into a call for. I've had people go get 50 customers. I had this one young lady, amazing. She literally got online, didn't know where she was. She saw the presentation. She signed up. She got the IBO number from the website of the guy who referred her to me. She went on his site while he was asleep. Within seven days, she had 50 customers. Now, we've all heard stories like that. You, know, wanna, you wanna know what's really amazing about that? Nobody helped her sign up a customer. You wanna know what's even more amazing about this conversation? She did it from Africa. She wasn't even in the country. She wasn't even in a country we were in. And she literally signed up 50 customers and five business partners in 14 days with just the videos that were online because that's all she had access to. And she couldn't get on calls because of the time zone. She couldn't get in touch with the upline because of the time zone. She was like, I don't have time to wait. I'm running a business. I, I don't... I, 
I'm a leader. When I speak, I need people to listen. She said, I called 40 people, 30 of them hung up on me, 10 said they wanted to see the business, six signed up. They just said, hey, you seem so convicted and you're calling me from Africa and you aren't even, what? And that was by way of an email. She sent emails to the 40 people and said, I need a three to five minute conversation if you want your life changed. 40 said yes, which means she reached out to more. 30 said no to the opportunity. This is all in less than two weeks. 10 said I'm interested, six signed up. And she said, let me show you what I did to sign up my 50 customers in my first seven days. I found two services that made sense to me. I got excited about, and I saw the value. And I just said, I need your help. So I don't understand and don't want to understand a person that's been in the business or chooses to be in the business and they don't have customers and they don't have business partners. I know people that have a whole lot of business partners and they have no customers. I know people that have a whole lot of customers and they have no business partners. Either way, on my book and my scale, that's a fail. But you know what's beautiful about that? You're in school right now. So the final has not been written. You can go back for the next semester. And when I gave you those questions, like for myself, I'm starting my own academy. I've chosen X amount of number of people to take underneath my umbrella. We've already put things in motion. We're launching. See, most people are like just thinking about the national. I'm thinking about after the national. I'm thinking about the season of taking that combustion, that energy, that gas, that fuel, and taking a squad and blowing them up. I'm blowing, I mean, like, do whatever you got to do to get all the stuff out of, out of your space. I, I'm, I had heart to heart and I'm having heart to heart conversations with people. I'm like, you need to have, you need to tell me up front. We need to really have a conversation because I will come for you. Don't waste my time. If I give you my word, I'm there. Let's go. Let's crack the code. And all those questions are part of my interviewing process to understand do you have 120 days? Are you going to be consistent? I don't care if the dog dies. I don't care if, I mean, you better be in a casket. The only way you can miss anything that I'm putting in place is if you didn't go to work or if you're in the hospital giving birth. Either you're in a casket or you're giving birth. But if you show up to a job before you show up for your own dream, and before you show up for someone like a Mr. Al Thomas and some of the other leaders that will show up for you, that are massively successful, that want to see you get to the other side of a family tree and change every branch on it, because there's nobody at your job that's going to do that. Oh, you have a good job, but you make 100, 200, you make 300,000 a year. You think you're making good money? Really? That's good money in this economy? with all the changes that are taking places. All you need is one thing to happen in your family or to someone you love to understand you don't have enough. This life was meant to live in full, be fully, I, I would write this down. I need to learn how to be fully expressed. And some of you guys need to learn how to shut up, but when I say fully express, I'm not talking about talk because some of you guys talk too much, but fully expressed where you can connect with another person's soul. And in full abundance is what comes as the aftermath of being able to touch a soul. Are you talking at people? Are you talking into their soul? There's no script for that, by the way. Well, what do you say? I listen all the time. And Mr. Al Thomas has scripts. I have scripts. We give you all these scripts. And the reality of it is, if you aren't talking to anybody, it really doesn't matter in the first place. <laughs> but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the people that make the most money are the people that don't know what they're doing. They just keep jumping in the water. They just keep jumping in the water. They could just keep taking a leap. They just keep getting scraped up. They just, they, I don't care. They aren't, they aren't worried about looking, you know, foolish. They aren't looking silly. They aren't worried about validation. They aren't worried about, you know, who, who didn't love them and what relationships they went through. And, you know, my daddy didn't love me. My mama left me. And, you know, well, you know, my child isn't talking to me. And, well, you don't understand all the responsibilities in my life. 
Nobody wants to hear your misery story. <laughs> Everybody has one. That's the whole cliche of taking lemons and turning it into lemonade. How many people want to hear your champion story, what you've championed from a benevolent perspective, from a loving perspective, from a caring perspective? They can tell that, it, that, that your story doesn't even have to relate to them except for the fact that you care. You know how simple it is to talk to people? Just how many people are looking for someone to just give them a little attention, to care. That's our job. I mean, and if, that, if you don't want that job and you're looking for it, then just be a customer. And, you know, there's a whole lot of other watering holes for getting the attention that you want without putting in the work. So. I hope this moves somebody because I don't even see this as Friday. I don't know what day it is. When you get to this level, every day is the same day. It's just another amazing day to do something. I, I, like I said, I haven't even been to bed. I was reading this book called Miracles. And uh, I believe in them. I truly believe. I believe that each one of you are a miracle. You just have to realize it for yourself. And once you realize it, then you will unapologetically go bless other people. Let me say, well, I'm going to say that again so you get what I just said. When you realize how much of a miracle you are to other people, you will be amazed how many miracles will come back to you. Not from where you expect it, because every time you have an expectation, you will be let down. You do it unapologetically. You do it from a space of love. You do it from a space of unconditional gratitude. Does that make sense, everybody? Excellent. I have to go in and take care of my mama. It's one of my blessings and my miracles. I love you guys. I'm going to turn it back over to Ms. Al Thomas. I'll see you at happy hour, Mr. Thomas. Love you guys.